Hi, I'm Chen. I'm presenting the paper entitled Modeling Soft Analytic Side Channel Attacks from a Coding Theory Viewpoint. This is joint work with Vassant, Francois Silvia, and Olivia. Me and Vassant will jointly present the work. This is the outline of the talk. I will start with the motivation, then I will introduce the model. The third part, I will introduce an application of uh, this model on an unprotected AES case. Then, uh, the song will introduce its applications on protected implementations, including masking and suffering. Last is the conclusion of the paper. Let's start with the concept of side channel analysis. There is a classic scenario in cryptography. I just want to send a message to Bob and she chooses to encrypt her message using some well designed ciphers such as AES. And there is an eavesdropper called Ave who can eavesdrop this channel to harm the secure communication. So the narrow sense crypto problem is to design good mass algorithm to achieve this secure communication goals in the presence of the eavesdropper. However, in the real world, in the implementation of the cipher will leak side channel information such as timing information, the power consumption, electromagnetic leaks to facilitate the if to break the claim security of the used uh, algorithm. So it is much more difficult to achieve secure communication in the physical world. Now we introduce a very important class of side channel attacks called differential power analysis DPA. So we have we know this uh, leakage traces, and from this leakage point, we know that it corresponds to such a computation that uh, we know the plain text x, and uh, then x will uh, will be XOR by a secret key to get z, and z will pass this S block to to get y. If we guess k is 0, then from the guess we can view the model m0 and compare l with m0, then we can get the probability that the k is 0. So then we exhaust the guess different values of keys and uh, uh, pick the most probable guess. This approach is also called a uh, divide and conquer strategy. Recently, a very, pow a very powerful side channel attack called uh, soft analytic side channel attack uh, Saska was discovered. The basic idea is to iteratively uh, update the messages. Uh, let's also take this computational graph as an example. So at the starting stage, we may have a large amount of information on some values. For instance, we know the plain text P, plain text X, and uh, uh, for this value y, we may have a very large leakage, but for this de desired secret key, we know a small amount of information. So, uh, after the information propagation, we know more about the intermediate values and find that we could recover the key. We can extend the previous computation graph to form a new tool example for our purpose. We have three layers of computation. The first layer includes four S-boxes, whose leakages can be exploited by the divide and conquer approach. If we only consider the leakage of the S-box output, we have a univariate model, otherwise it is bivariate. We can also have one-round Saska targets, that cannot be exploited by the divide and conquer approach. By summing the output of two S-box in the previous round and letting it be the input of another S-box. We can do the same to have a two-round Saska target as well. So a natural question is, can any leakage be exploited? As suggested by masking security proof, all the leakage samples in the implementation can be exploited. Is it true? For the divide and conquer approach, it is definitely not true. Actually, only the leakage from the first and last rounds of block ciphers can be exploited. 
but the divide and conquer approach has the advantage that uh, its security evaluation is very easy. For instance, for 8 bit device, if we assume for a bivariate leakage and assume that mutual information per leakage is epsilon bits, or if we do normalization, has lambda bytes, then we can easily, easily bound that the required number of traces is this. So for soft analytic attacks, the situation is much better. This is a very powerful attack. We call it nearly worst case attack as it's, it has a performance close to the optimal one in the information theoretical sense. However, SASC also has some aspects that need to be further investigated. One main problem is that it is hard for security evaluation. If you want to know its performance, then you have to run the attack. The difficulty is twofold. From one hand, the attack result can be very heuristic and depend on the circuit representation. If the circuit has a lot of cycles, then the result will not converge or even converge to a wrong value. On the other hand, computing information propagation can be slow. For instance, for an n-bit XOR, it may take time n times 2 to n. Actually, this complexity is already very high for a 32-bit device. So, the scope of, of this paper is to investigate the evaluation of SASCA. We propose a new model called Local Random Probing Model, LRPM, to bound the efficiency of SASCA. This model allows fast security evaluations of SASCA. This model allows revisiting masking security proofs and the evaluation of actual implementations in a flexible manner. This model allows speeding up the evaluation of shuffling. Now we come back to the toy unprotected implementation shown in the previous slides. Actually, we could represent it in a factor graph. We show it uh, as an instance uh, with three choices here. So the key variables are the divided conquer targets and the W variables and the B variables are Saska targets. The divide and the conquer targets are connected by continuous channels. It means that for different choices, the value will be the same. Otherwise, for the Saska targets, it has one shot leakage. Another difference, another difference is that for the divide and the conquer targets, we have bivariate leakage. For the Saska targets, we have univariate leakage. The dark gray box represents the continuous leakage. In our example, we assume that we have epsilon is 0 0.1 bits or lambda is 0 0.1 over 8 bytes per leakage. So the two LC box represents 0 0.1 over 4 bytes per choice. As Saska will iteratively update the message, we need to design local information propagation rules to bound the normalized information leakage on uh, each edge. There are two pipe nodes, the variable nodes and the function nodes. For the variable nodes, it's relatively simple, we're just summing the input value. So this is similar to measuring information from independent traces in design and conquer approach. For the function node, it could be complicated. We approximate the probability distribution on each edge by a distribution from a culinary erasure channel or a random probing model with erasure probability at least 1 minus lambda. Then we will observe an erasure channel on the output edge with erasure probability at least this value. And from coding theory, we know that the channel capacity of the erasure channel is at most this value. So we can use this value to bound the collected information on this edge. If we assume that the mutual information per leakage is 0 0.1 bits and 
With the model, we know that when run Saska, the required number of samples is at least 27. And for two run Saska, it is 21. So we see that 27 is about 8 over 0 0.3. And 0 0.3 consists of two parts. One is from the bivariate leakage for the divide and conquer targets. And uh, 0 0.1 is uh, the univariate leakage for the Saska targets. We see that the security of an implementation in the LRPM may decrease linearly with its circuit size for small examples. It is a confirmation of the masking secure proofs and it is independent of whether these leakages are exploitable by DC. However, this is just very small examples. With the AES or known plain text case, we will see that sometimes it is not true and digging beyond a few rounds is useless. Now we start the AES case study. So this is a factor graph of the fir first round, first column of AES. So it's very complicated. We can do some merge in chain trick to simplify the graph. So we merge variables connected by a bijection. We see that y1 is the XOR of k1 and x1. But as we know, the plain text x1, so y1 and k1 is connected by bijection. And also y1 is connected with z1 with a bijection. So we can put k1, y1, z1 as a new variable v1 and connected the leakages to this new variable. By the merging trick, we hide the nonlinear operation and the remaining is only the XOR operation. So we have a tenor graph in the coding literature and the graph is, is much more simplified. From this tenor graph, we could define an adjacency matrix. And we could also define an LDPC code by treating this adjacency matrix as a parity check matrix. If we think reversely, we could define a cipher from an LDPC code, thereby connecting the cipher design problem to a code design problem. We hope the tools in the LDPC code design could be helpful to design Saska resistant ciphers. This could be a good topic for future research. We present the evaluation results of the AES case study. Our setting is we consider different number of rounds of leakage exploited. We consider different deterministic parts of the leakage function, including the random leakage model and the Hamming weight leakage model. We consider different noise levels, including lower noise regime and the higher noise regime. We also consider the known plain text or unknown plain text scenario. So our general result is that the model prediction match the experiment and are conservative. And the evaluation time of our LRPM is significantly shorter. This figure shows the leakage bounds and the success rates of experimental Saska with up to two rounds against an unprotected AES implementation in a known plain text scenario. Here, epsilon is 0.0. 0, 0.5, so we are in a lower noise scenario. We simulate this TA of divide and conquer attacks and the one round Saska and the two round Saska attacks. For the three cases, we do the experiments in the Hamming weight leakage model and the random leakage model respectively. And our conclusion is that the attack complexity is independent of the shape of the leakage functions. We also do the experiments in the higher noise scenario. Our conclusion is that the improvement of Saska over TA is independent of the noise. So, this is particularly relevant in practice because we can then compute the constant factor between the conservative model and the real attacks, and this will hold independent of the noise. We also run the model and the experiment in an unknown plain text scenario with up to 10 rounds. 
of the results show that in the non plain text scenario, digging beyond the second round does not help much. But in an unknown plain text scenario, leakages from all the rounds are very helpful. Hello, first area, I will continue the presentation which protected implementation cases. And we start with masking. The main idea of masking is to share the sensitive value x into several shares 0 up to D, and then to perform the operation over the shares. So when an attacker wants to exploit such an information, he would recover information on each shell and then you need to combine this information to recover information on the sensitive value. And this can be represented with uh, the factor graph that is described in the left part of the slide, where we have our sensitive value x there and then our shells there. We have our leakage information for graph and then our combination function that will send information to the sensitive value. And this can be adapted in our local random probing model with the set of equations in the right part. So we assume we have the same amount of information on each share, lambda per bit, so that is the information per bit, so it's less than one. And then we can estimate the information we send to from the combining function to the sensitive value by raising this value to the power d, and that is what uh, we expect from masking proof that the information decreases exponentially with the the number of shares that it did. Of course, there is some constant factor on the proof, and we discuss some technicalities to reflect that in the paper. Finally, we can estimate the information bound from the encoding for several observations for n iteration just by multiplying by n. So that is for mask and encoding. Finally, we can also do uh, one remark that now in masking uh, case, as opposite to unprotected case, we don't have continuous leakage, we just have one leakage. So once we have uh, observation for uh, encoding, we can look at what happens when we perform the operation. And uh, usually horizontal attack against masking will target the multiplication algorithm such as uh, isha isha even multiplication. This kind of algorithm takes two shares okay, two shares value as uh, input and perform cross product. So this cross product has some information about the sensitive value and the goal of horizontal attack is to export this. So we look at how to estimate uh, bond of uh, leakage from this uh, internal product and we describe this in the equation in the paper. So once again, go to the paper for more information. But here I've just uh, described the estimation bond we get. So that is represented on the graph. On the x-axis, we have the number of measurements, and on the y-axis, the uh, one we estimate. Both axes are in low scale, and we look at different uh, cases, different order. So in blue, we have order 3, in red for order 6, and in green for order 9. And on the left part, we are in the high noise scenario. In that case, we can see that the distance between the lines seem to be similar from 3 to 6 or 6 to 9, and that what we see is the impact factor huh? when we have double the, uh, when we add 3 to the other, we have the same impact on the leakage point. Now if we look at low noise, that is on the right part, we can see that the distance between the lines are smaller, smaller, for 6 to 9 than from 3 to 6, and that's where we can take advantage of partial product. And actually, it's what it was shown in horizontal attack against masking literature, is that uh, it's efficient, or we can obtain more information when we are in low noise setting, in high noise, it's much more complicated to export this information. Finally, one remark we can do is that using our set of equations, it's quite easy or quite efficient to derive this um, this graph 
that uh, when you have to implement the horizontal attack and to repeat the uh, attack to estimate uh, the success rate, then it can be quite uh, competitionally intensive. So that is one main advantage. We have the similar observation, but then we are way more efficient. We now consider another contribution that is shopping. And the main idea of shopping is when we have a set of the same operation done on a different part of the state, is to perform in random order. Typically, when we have a block cipher like the AES and we have the Xbox layer, we have 16 times uh, the same operation that is uh, code executed for the Xbox, and we first do the first Xboxes that would correspond to that point in the trace. Then we do the second operation, and we know at which time, at which point in the trace it should correspond, etc. The main idea of masking is to perform this operation in order and order, such that we start maybe for the Xbox 3, so this is error, and then we will do the Xbox 5, and then the Xbox 1, so when an adversary has to attack such uh, traces, he don't know at which point he should obtain the leakage for XB1. So the idea is then to spread the, the information, the point of test over the T cycle, and T is the number of operations we should have. And this aims to amplify the map. So we can consider different scenario to attack a shuffling. The first one is the uh, one with no information about the, uh, the permutation. So basically we have to consider all the points and to sum up while doing an integral attack by summing all the points and to attack all together. So we call this uh, okay, unit template attack and this will give us epsilon information on each point in the trace. The second case is when we have some information in the permutation. Since the permutation needs to be generated, then we can absorb something. And then we can link the information from the permutation and the observation we get to have more successful attack. And this is what we call DP leak attack. And we have another estimation of the information. We have another permutation, epsilon p. Finally, we also look at uh, third cases where for efficiency reasons, sometimes we don't shuffle out the operation, but we, we start with a random index. So typically we just look at a random value and then execute the S-boxes in the order, but we're starting with a different, not from one, but from a different value. And this is called a random start index, and this can also be uh, attack, and since we have more structure in the shuffling, we can have more efficient attack, and we call this case uh, RSC in union template attack. Using total random probing, we can evaluate uh, leakage from the different scenario. This estimation can be computed efficiently compared to evaluation based on attack that require intensive computation. We draw down on the graph on the x axis, we have the number of measurements, and on the y axis, we have our leakage point. We have several graphs, so the blue line corresponds to the unprotected case that is given to our references, and then in green we have the random start index attack, then in blue the DP template attack, so the one using information on uh, the permutation generation, and in black we have the attack which show things that when we don't use the, the permutation. On the left part, we have low noise scenario. In the right part, we have high noise scenario. And in the paper, we also met some uh, intermediate noise labor. And we have uh, some observations we can make from this graph and that are similar to the one from uh, shuffling literature. Is that for low noise, shuffling is ineffective and don't uh, improve the security of your device. For a lot, we know it's a shuffling start to have uh, an impact on the information leaked, but as a random start index, 
it's uh, quite easy to do the enumeration, then he have weaker uh, security. And finally, for large noise, all, uh, all shuffling the operation have a similar impact, and typically we multiply the noise by the number of operations near uh, the number of operations. And typically, it's what we can see here. We, for unprotected case, we need to have full information, uh, 100 uh, traces, while for uh, shuffling, then we done 1600. So. so, we conclude our work. We have proposed a new model called Local Random Probing Model, LRPM, to bound the efficiency of SASCA. This model allows fast security evaluation of SASCA. This model prediction match the experiments and are conservative for an unprotected AES implementation. This model could be applied to evaluate protected implementations such as masking and suffering. Actually, this model has been applied in some recent papers. We hope that this research could set light on the systematic study of Combined countermeasures again nearly worst case Saska. Thank you.